Welcome to Ask Cadence, everybody. Thank you for downloading. My name is Pete Wright, and I'm sitting here with Jay Christensen. Good morning, Pete. How are you, Jay? I'm fantastic. And it's just us. (laughs) I don't know what we did last time to scare everybody else off, Uh, but we do. We have a fresh set of problem uh, problem cards, and I think the I I think if I'm not talking out of school, I think this first problem card, three little words, I think define what some high percentage, 60, 70 percent of the small projects, maybe even medium-sized projects that get done or don't get done as the case may be uh, in business today. No steering committee. There's no steering committee on the project. Am, am, I, you know, exactly. am I close to the mark here? That, that seems to be a significant problem. It's an exact uh, characterization of the problem. In fact, uh, this is one of the least understood roles in the project world. And uh, many, many uh, people that try to do projects have no concept of the steering committee. And then when they bring it up in their organizations, uh, there isn't widespread understanding within the organization about what a steering committee would do uh, for a project. Now, why is that? Is it because they've never been introduced to it, or culturally it's something that, they're, they, that organizations typically you know, uh, like to see themselves as more organic? You know? uh, yeah, and well, and there is also a no formal um, structure that people have had in the past in many cases to even think about a steering committee. I mean there's been people that have been performing the role but they weren't called a steering committee in some cases. So when you bring up this concept of steering committee people say oh we don't have that. Well when in fact maybe they do but they just don't um, uh, treat the, the person or the people in that same way as we would define a steering committee. Okay, so first let's walk through what what we define a steering committee steering committee as as doing and what they are. Right. Uh, and then maybe we can talk through some of the characteristics of what organizations that are that, that likely should transition to that model are, are dealing right. with. Good. Uh, in fact, uh, let's start at the basics, and that is is that uh, every project should have a sponsor. And a sponsor is a person that makes key decisions on the project, makes tactical and strategic decisions, not day-to-day decisions. But this is a person that approves changes to CSP, approves change requests, um, makes key decisions, as I said earlier. And these are uh, people that will really be the organization's voice for the business value behind the project. A, a, A sponsor. Uh, is holding the team responsible for project success, then the sponsor then will ultimately ultimately be responsible for business success. That's to be measured 6 to 12 to 18 months after the project is over with. So, sponsor then is that role. If we have multiple sponsors for a project, now we're talking about a steering committee. Okay, Uh, you know, I was just going to ask what's the difference between a sponsor and a steering committee, but essentially they're the same. Exactly, right. It's just a group of uh, sponsors would then comprise a steering committee. Okay. And once we have the steering committee, then we have some added complexity be, uh, complexities regarding politics, uh, regarding direction of the project, uh, regarding uh, I want my favorite scope done in, um, in preference over someone else's scope. So we have all these kinds of issues that can arise as a result of a steering committee. And that's why it becomes ultimately crucial for a steering committee to have a chair, a chairperson, that will resolve any differences in opinions ultimately, uh, or that will also make uh, decisions in tiebreaker cases, and that will keep the members of the steering committee rounded up and Uh, acting as a cohesive group of people that will provide direction for the project. It seems like one of their goals is to make sure that no one voice is louder than another. No one interest is, is, you know, more, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, is louder than another. Correct, yeah. Yeah, and the thing of it is if you have one person on the steering committee that is more dominant than the rest or is predominant, Um, to a large degree, then you're back to having a sponsor. And perhaps you could put the other members of the steering committee uh, in as working advisory members, that they are providing some feedback and some uh, guidance to the sponsor for the project. Uh, So sometimes we can use that kind of a vehicle to uh, take care of the situation where one of the steering committee members is more uh, dominant than the others. And uh, by the way, the steering committee is just like a team. 
and they are formed just like a project team is. And in fact, what should happen is the project manager, when uh, she recognizes that there's no steering committee, then her behavior would be at that point to begin to look for people that can perform in that role in the organization. And the guideline here is first, they need to understand the purpose behind the project, the business value, and can support the business value that the project is intending to deliver. Second, uh, these uh, steering committee members should be at a level high enough in the organization that manages all the resources on the project because resource decisions are made uh, uh, by these people and those decisions need to stick once they are made. And then uh, these uh, steering committee members should be, of course, respected by other people in the organization and have a good understanding about where the company is going. So the project manager would then identify likely candidates for the steering committee membership, then perhaps discuss the uh, list of potential candidates with her boss, and then uh, um, postulate on what might be the chairperson of that steering committee and the project manager would then approach that chairperson, potential, and begin to sound out this person's uh, um, interest in performing as a steering committee chair. And then that person would be the seed to begin to form, uh, in a more formal way, the steering committee. It, if, if the steering committee is like a project team, is there any relationship to the steering committee you know, formation and function to our project scaling guidelines, right? I mean, is there such a thing as a steering committee that's too big for the project? Oh, exactly. How do those uh, relate? Good, good point. In fact, for micro and small projects, one sponsor is plenty. But for medium and large and very large projects, then we could talk about a steering committee. And um, uh, rule of thumb here, as far as I'm concerned, is between five to seven people. If you get um, more than that, it just becomes too difficult to manage. Sounds right unruly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's just too many uh, varied opinions, too many directions yeah. that the project could proceed in. Okay, so let's take a step back to a company that has no steering committee. So we now know what the steering committee should do and how they, how they should be formed and their function. How do you make a transition from an, for an organization that has no steering committee and has been operating in you know, that sort of uh, mode to creating the steering committee culture? How do you make that change? Yeah, there's um, some education that needs to occur in the organization. And one of the vehicles that I would use is what is the purpose of the steering committee? And the project people, ideally, the pers if there is a person responsible for the project process, would be the person to educate the organization about the role of the steering committee. And <clears throat> the initial uh, discussion about the steering committee should be what are the key decisions that they make. For example, uh, uh, tactical and strategic, changing to, uh, changes to CSP, change requests, and actually uh, changing the scope or the schedule or the performance for the project or even the budget for the project. That's the role of the steering committee. Then, uh, once that generalized view is given, then we can take the role descriptions for the steering committee and begin to market that role description to other people in the organization. And the role descriptions uh, is fairly, um, it's about a page in length. It could be highlighted and uh, very effectively presented in a short uh, two to three minute presentation. For example, uh, at a uh, all company gathering would be a, uh, an option. Another would be to request time on a high level meeting agenda where this role of the steering committee uh, or sponsor is presented to the members at that high level. And then, of course, when a project begins, a medium to a large project, that's fairly critical in nature. That's a wonderful opportunity to begin to market this role of the steering committee and what they do and how they can su uh, support the project team and enable the project uh, team to deliver the business results intended for the project. So there's a need at the project level, but really this has to start at the top and come and, and be a cultural discussion that comes down from the top. Yes, indeed. Yes. And uh, by the way, uh, sometimes the, the um, default is to have all of the president's direct reports 
be members of a project steering committee. And that becomes a case where there are just too many people in, in mm -hmm. uh, a large number of companies. So we have to pick and choose. And we'd like to have a mix of people on the steering committee, uh, but these are people that are major stockholders, or excuse me, stakeholders, not stockholders, <laughs> uh, stakeholders that have a lot to gain or lose as a result of project success or failure. Uh, well, likely the stockholders would have this much to gain or lose. <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that's very helpful, and I hope we've helped the person who asked this question, uh, the no steering committee question. I think it's very interesting, uh, interesting and uh, challenge to come across. Thank you very much for listening. On behalf of Jay Christensen and myself, Pete Wright, uh, tune in next week for another, uh, another edition of Ask Cadence.